Hey guys, guess what? I got a new Bible, which is not that surprising because I love Bibles. Um, but this Bible was sent to me by the Spiral Bible and I wanted to give it a try and see how it works, how it feels, um, how it is during my study time. So I figured that the best way to do that is by having a study with me. So study with me using the Spiral Bible. But before we do that, I want to give you a little tour of the Spiral Bible. So first of all, here's the cover. They have the Spiral Bible in the New Testament and then they have it in the Old Testament broken down. So I got the New Testament. It's in the American Standard Version and it says the Word of God for note takers. So if you're a note taker, this may be the Bible for you. Let's open it up and see more about it. All right. So it has a place where you can put your name and all that. All right. So this is what the inside looks like. It gives you a little rundown about who they are, what they're doing, what their mission is. This is what the inside looks like. Look at those margins. They are huge to put notes in. Um, and they also have some blank note pages, but I don't think it comes at the end. Yeah, no, it's not at the end of every page, but it has some. Okay, so we have note pages going all the way through. And remember, this I got to keep reminding myself, this is just the New Testament. So it's going to start in Matthew, not in Genesis. Um, but yeah, so this is what it looks like. Let's see what the transition from Matthew to Mark looks like. And then it transitions to Mark like this. Okay, so it has like a little space down here. It has some space to write. Okay, all right. So let's get started using this Bible. All right, everybody. So for today's study with me, we are going to study James chapter one. We're going to go from verse one through verse eight. So you know how we like to do it. We will pray read this collection of verses two times through, and then we will go ahead and I'll show you what I do during my study or reflection time. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together and to study James chapter one. We ask that you show us whatever it is that you want us to see in this chapter. Lord, help us to see you, help us to know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so James chapter one, let's go ahead and read it. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are of the di dispersions, greeting. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into manifold temptations, knowing that the proving of your faith worketh patience and let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not doubting, for he that doubteth is like the surge of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man, unstable, in all his ways. Whew. All right, let's read this one more time. I like to highlight the words that are standing out to me. Um, I just like to highlight them so that I'll know which words to come back to when I am in the reflection part. <laughs> out for you guys so you can see kind of what I do with my notes to kind of keep my notes understandable because <laughs> I don't know about you guys sometimes I write things and then I go back and I'm like what in the world so I go CWTA I'm not really good with acronyms so it doesn't it's not an acronym but <laughs> it's what I do so I write the context the words the timeless truth and an application like what is the application from this so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do that stood out to me here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my computer and um, look these words up in the Strong's Concordance and kind of write 
a brief definition because we know that um, the New Testament is written in Greek. So the words here are actually Greek words. And so I want to know what these words are um, kind of mean in the Greek. So let me go over to my computer and then I'll write them down. Had a chance to write your words down. These are the words that stood out to me, and these are kind of what they mean from the Strong's Concordance. And so now, with all of that, I move on to the timeless truth because I know that this is a letter that James is writing to people that are not me, and it has been canonized in the Bible. So I want the timeless truth, the truth that is across time, and not just for um, not just for the people of that time. Like what truth is persistent? across time. I actually had to um, look up the word double-minded. It means two souls or to be of two minds. And it, to ask of faith means to trust and believe. So it's like ask God. So if you lack wisdom, right? If you lack wisdom, if you don't have wisdom, ask God, right? Ask God and it will be given to you. But you have to ask in faith, which means you have to ask in trust or ask in belief. You have to trust God. You have to trust what he says. You have to trust what he's saying to you. So you have to ask God and trust him. You can't just ask him, but you have to ask God and trust him because it goes on to say that you can't be doubting for he that doubteth is like the surge of the sea driven by the wind and tossed for let not that man think he shall receive anything. What is this anything? This is any wisdom because we're talking about wisdom. So shall not receive any wisdom. If we're going to doubt what he says, we're not going to receive his wisdom. If we're going to doubt what he says, we're not going to receive any wisdom from the Lord. And then it goes on to say a double-minded man, a man of two souls or two minds, like you don't know who you're going to trust is unstable in all his ways. You can't gain wisdom from anywhere. You can't gain wisdom from God. You can't gain knowledge from what you're doing because you're constantly going back and forth on what you think is true or not. And so the timeless truth here for me is ask God for wisdom and, and believe him. It's not just about asking him. It's asking and believing. you got to believe what he says. you got to believe what he says because asking him for wisdom and not believing what he says does nobody any good. It still keeps you so unstable. He could give you the answer. He could reveal the, the answer in the scriptures. But if you don't believe him, then what good is it? If you don't believe the wisdom that he's giving you, then what good is it? If you think that you know better, then the wisdom that he's giving you is going to be of no benefit in your life. So ask God for wisdom and believe him. Believe what he says. And then that brings us to the application part for me, which is really important for me because it's like, okay, God, how do you want me to apply this to my life? And for me, it is stop questioning God's wisdom. Remember, he knows best. So asking God for wisdom and he'll give it to you. He'll give you the wisdom. But when you ask, you got to believe what he says. Asking him and then not believing what he says is pointless. You, he can give you all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't believe what he's saying, if you don't believe him, if you constantly are thinking, I know best, then the wisdom that God is revealing to you is not going to be beneficial in your life. Instead, when you ask, believe God, already be in the stance and ready to believe what God reveals to you. If you ask him about a certain relationship in your life and he reveals it to you, believe him. A lot of times we want to not believe, oh, well, no you know, this is going to work out. It's going to be fine. But God has revealed, no, no, you need to walk away. So now 
you can't be of two minds. You've got to believe God. If you're going to ask him and you want the wisdom to actually be beneficial in your life, you've got to believe what he says. You've got to believe what he reveals. You've got to be in a posture ready to trust him no matter what, no matter if you agree with him or not. So overall, let me, let me look on the next page. Look, guys, look, this is what I wanted to see. So there really is no bleed through. Um, granted, I did use um, the Mr. Pen highlighters that, that are not supposed to bleed through. And I was kind of concerned about this Bible because the, the pages feel, felt a little thin. Now, granted, all Bible pages feel thin. Um, but th there's no bleed through, which is great. I do write kind of hard, so it's kind of, you can feel it, of course. But there's no bleed through. And I can easily use this other page to take notes. So that's great. Um, I'm a big note taker, so um, sometimes small margins are not enough for me, and the small margins probably wouldn't be enough for me completely because as you can see, I only study like one section of scripture. So I typically need to like tape other things in to be able to study other parts of this chapter. Um, but I love the fact that I was able to get in at least all of my study around this particular verse. Um, I'm pretty much a notebook and pencil and paper girl, but this will really work, especially if you find that you don't write as big as me um, and maybe you don't take as much notes during your first read through this would be great. Overall, I think this is a great Bible. Um, a few things that, you know, you may want to consider. Again, the this is with any note Bible, right? Any note Bible is not a big space. Um, so you may want to kind of alter your note-taking strategy if you use this Bible. Like for instance, if you want to focus on the context and one word um, and, you know, timeless truth and put the application somewhere else, um, or what have you, or if you want to use like, I know some people use note, uh, sticky notes and kind of stick them where they need to once they run out of space in the note taking side. Um, so that is a possibility, right? Another thing that I want to make mention of is that this Bible does not have a table of contents. So if you are in the beginning stages of learning the Bible um, and you find it difficult to find certain sections of your Bible, I would recommend putting tabs. So you can put tabs on this um, and so that you can easily find different books of the Bible. There's no shame, y'all. There's no shame if you are still using the table of contents. I still use it sometimes too. Um, so, and if you are like, wait, it doesn't have a table of contents, you can put tabs. So I would recommend getting tabs in your Bible as well um, and making sure that when you use this Bible or any Bible really, that you have specific highlighters that are um, that are like pastel gel or that are gel. They don't have to be pastel, but that are gel so that they don't bleed through because the last thing you want is like, this used to happen to me all the time. I would highlight something and it would bleed right through. And then it looks like I highlighted something on the other page when I didn't. And when I went back to look at my notes, I didn't really understand what in the world I was looking for. But overall, if you are, if you like um, spirals, like I know a lot of you like Bibles or things that you can turn like this, where you can like turn it, right? And you don't have to have the whole thing open. It takes up less space um, versus like other Bibles where you can't really do this because of the, the margin. Then this is the Bible for you. Um, I'm actually affiliate now for the Spiral Bible. So you can go down in the description box and grab the affiliate link and order your Spiral Bible there. Again, they have, um, they have the New Testament. They also have the Old Testament broken down by genre, which I love. If you are in the um, Faith Mama University, you may want to grab one of those that are broken down by genre because we do a lot of studying based on genre. Um, but then they also have a spiral Bible for kids, which I think I'm going to pick up for my kids. So make sure you check them out. I mean, I think that this Bible is a great Bible for note takers. Um, you may need an extra notebook. I mean, that's just me. I take a lot of notes. Um, but if you do use an extra notebook, what I like to do, um, if I do, I would write a little footnote here to say which notebook I can find it in because I like to look back at my notes um, and, and see where I'm going. And that kind of helps me to stay focused. So if you do use an extra notebook, just put a note under your notes here and then where you can find it in your extra notebook. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this study with me and that it gave you a feel for how this Bible works and whether or not you would like to use it. As you can see, this is not a study Bible. So there are no commentary notes. There are no footnotes, um, none of that. So I do recommend if you use this Bible um, to also get a study Bible or also have a commentary um, along with it. A study Bible is great because it has footnotes at the bottom and it tells you like where to look in different places. Um, and so those are some great tools to use 
as well. Why this Bible is so great um, and journaling Bibles are so great is because you can keep your notes alongside what you read and you don't have to go looking and searching all over the place for a different notebook. Like, where did I put it? Where did I put it? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. So if this is something that you think that you would be interested in, check down in the description box below um, and check out my affiliate link and get you a Spiral Bible and give it a try. Shout out to the Spiral Bible. Thank you so much for sending me this Bible to give it a try. I really enjoy it and it will definitely be in my Bible lineup. Y'all know I love Bibles, so I will definitely be using this again and again. All right, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Spiral Bible, if you will be picking it up, and what you think about this Bible study with me. Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. I enjoyed it. All right, bye for now.